Yes. Teach us how to use Teams. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Teams. To another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune. The Steve and Adam Show with Ben. Hey, Ben. Hey. hey. How's it going? What's <laughs> up, dudes? How you going? All right, we're on our second video of the night and like eight hours in on this so far. So, uh, oh, fingers. Yeah. Do some cool <laughs> stuff. Um, <laughs> let's act like this is the first time we've spoken tonight. Hey, how's it going, guys? What are you up to? Oh, you know, uh, not much. Just uh, it's, a, it's a lovely Saturday over here. And uh, instead of being outside, which, you know, I'm not allowed to, I figured I'd uh, talk to you guys and get nerdy. Well, you are Man, allowed that's a, to. That's a nice lockdown only. beard you got going there. I'm, I like it. It is well, not well, a. Well please don't placate me. This is terrible. Um, <laughs> I'm acutely aware point. of how terrible it is. We all started somewhere. <laughs> yes. And, and it's good to see that you, you, you've made the endeavor to join the whole Intune training crew of having the beard. And <laughs> one day, one day, maybe I'll have a drawing on the logo. <laughs> we were we were kidding about the fact that we said that you had to have a beard to be on into not trading, but no, I you took, took it very it seriously. seriously. I took really it very seriously. The, we really yeah. appreciate the effort there. So this is this is great. Nice to have oh, you excellent. back. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, I'm gonna talk about something near and dear to my heart. Um, so the last bunch of years, um, I've been doing a lot of PowerShell stuff. Um, and it's primarily just been stored on GitHub, used uh, internally in the companies that I've worked at, uh, or shared, you know, outside of standard sources. Um, what I want to show you today is something that I am probably after we do this uh, session, so it should be uh, available when we uh, when this video is aired. Is I have a uh, PowerShell module that I'm actually going to publish to the PowerShell gallery. Um, because I've uh, been working on this for long enough uh, uh, that I've had enough time to sort of step away and I've realized that um, there's enough value for everyone uh, that there's it's it's crazy to not make it public. Um, so I guess I'll just sort of get into what that is. Sounds good. Cool. Um, all right, let me get rid of your beautiful faces. That's so so the, awesome. Yeah, you are. Um, all right, so the module that I built is uh, called uh, the Intune USB Creator. Um, basically, what it is is a, uh, a helper uh, script or function um, that will allow you to build a provisioning USB uh, device to rapidly uh, install Windows 10 and get, your, get any device uh, ready to enroll in Autopilot. Um, we So... Just, yep. just to ask the question there, Ben, does that include like network drivers or anything specific to a device when you right say now, any device? Yeah, so right now, no. Um, the key goal was to get the latest version of Windows 10 uh, onto a machine with the autopilot configuration. Okay. Um, we have the functionality available to us to import drivers uh, on demand, um, but for for, you know, version 1.0 this is just get windows 10 onto a machine get it yep. ready for autopilot so i've um the reason that i didn't pr focus primarily on that was because i've yet to run into a machine uh that i've needed to install uh non-standard drivers to get it online i know i know that they exist um mm -hmm. but you know 95 percent of the machines that i've worked with have worked fine yeah, so that's, when that's, you've used the same two machines over and over again, that's, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So well, when I just you tell the customer to use the same hard hardware in every at every customer. Well, yeah, yeah of course yeah. it's going to be work, like no problems. That's you it. should release a script that only works per like for a single device, like a single model. Like, nope, this is only the and Dell. I will. The I Dell will. Version. And a very bespoke model. What I'll do yeah. is I'll put a uh, I'll put a requires flag in there that says you can only use this on a Lenovo X1 Carbon of a 2018 version. And it has yeah. to have this SKU that was specifically customized for us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to get into the code. That's This isn't the right place for it. Um, what I want to do is just show you how it works. Uh, and then hopefully by the time this is aired, uh, you guys can sort of get in and, and have a play with it as well. Well, um, and so before you get too too deep in, so I just want to let's go. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more remedial. Uh, so 
essentially we 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 have a machine that's bricked in some way or has an old version of the OS or we go and buy it from Best Buy and we don't know what's on it or whatever. We we just we have a machine and we need yep. to we want to autopilot it. This may be I mean generally is this for testing or is this for anything for production if we wanted to or this would be I, I honestly believe that this uh, this scenario would be perfect for a production scenario. Um, I have yep. an example that's actually about to come up where we're going to go. Uh, we're doing a greenfield deployment to a, a client of I think they have about 50 machines uh, and we don't uh, uh, 300. There you go. 300 uh, where we basically can't trust the uh, the version of uh, Windows that is on the machine. So we're going to start fresh. Um, and to do that, I'm actually going to utilize this solution. So we're going to build some provisioning USBs, provide them to the staff that are going to be on site, and the process will be that they will plug them in, they will reimage the machines, and then get the end users up and running uh, to, you know, to present their username and password in generally less than five minutes. So, uh, and, and so, so this is, uh, so I'm coming from a config manager environment, and I'm used yep. to being able to just you know, Pixie boot a machine or I've got a bootable media that will boot into a task sequence and let me build a machine out. And they've even got the autopilot, you know, task sequence thing that we can do. But so this would be for particularly for environments that are all all Azure AD. Uh, so they've got no, no on-prem resources. They've got no config manager, MDT, no anything to build a machine from. Yeah. And so it's like, how do you get the OS on the machine to begin with? is kind of this, the answer, the, the, the question that you're answering with this is, is essentially what we're doing, right? Exactly, yeah. So like there's been too many times where I've found uh, that, uh, you know, clients pull out their, their brand new devices out of the box uh, and they immediately go in and try and uh, provision them, get them into uh, autopilot and they, they run through the whole process and then for whatever reason, Office doesn't install. And that reason is always because the uh, the operating system that comes out of box has got its own baked in weird, uh, you know, fat client version of Office. And or it, the, the favorite one we've seen is that you get two versions of Office. Yes. Exactly. And it doesn't matter how many times you tell the, the end user that you probably need to reimage the machine, there someone's going to forget at some point. And then that computer is going to end up out, out in the environment or you know in production and it's going to be messy and it's going to be more difficult to remediate it once it's in the hands of the end user than it is to just do it correctly the first time. And that's yes. sort of what this solution is is allowing us to do is to make sure that we're we know what level we're working from because we know uh, we know that we chose the uh, operating system build version, uh, and we know that everything sort of going up to that point is is trusted. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and part of what this whole solution is about as well is making sure that um, people that are working from home in these uncertain times we find ourselves in. Um, Living in, almost. Sorry. Oh, I, I, was, I was generalizing. <laughs> um, but basically... We're sitting here and needing the ability for people at home being able to have USB keys just in case the computer doesn't come back. That's right. Um, and and that's, that's the primary reason why. Um, so this customer in question, um, they had three devices that didn't come back. Um, and out of 300 devices, that's 1%. That's, that's, a, that's a decent number of devices mm. to be concerned about. Um, and that was only a, a, a fleet of 50 computers that had been imaged at that point. So um, they needed something that they could remote onto a computer, run a PowerShell script as an admin to create the USB key because the native tool set from Microsoft needs to be signed in as a full admin to create the media. Yeah. And that's just impossible to do um, remotely. So that was part of the whole story as well. Exactly. Um, all right. So I guess we'll just get straight into the, the process of um, sort of preparing the media and then building the USB device. Um, in this in this example, I'm not going to use a USB. I'm just going to create a, a virtual hard drive um, just because it's nice and quick. And uh, to sort of demo the end state, uh, I don't have the ability to switch to another machine. So we'll just do it all on this machine. Um, but, you know, this this works for sort of anything that you plug into your computer. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to grab the autopilot configuration from your uh, from your Intune tenant. Um, we do this uh, we do this rather with two uh, modules from the PowerShell gallery. Um, the first one is uh, let me just confirm this. 
get module uh, Microsoft Graph dot Intune, and they make it nice and easy to remember. Windows Autopilot Intune. So these two uh, are key to getting the uh, the autopilot config extracted into a JSON format. Now, I do believe you guys have already covered this, um, so we won't yep. get super, super into it. Um, but basically the process is, is that we authenticate into uh, Graph using a, a commandlet that is in Microsoft Graph.Intune called connect-msgraph, uh, uh, which I've already done. So it, it basically just goes through the ADAL login or the, the interactive login, ask you if you use username and your password. And then it brings back your context. Uh, so we're, we're now uh, logged in for all intents and purposes. Um, and then we need to capture the uh, the autopilot information and then extract it as a JSON file. Um, so to do that, we will just go uh, config is get autopilot uh, profile. We'll outgrid this. Do I remember how to do that? No, I'm just going to write OGV because it's been a very long time. Uh, and we're going to pass that through. If we type this in, in the back here, we get two different uh, autopilot configs in the Intune training environment. So I've obviously got the white glove demo and then just the Intune training demo. I assume that the Intune.training demo is the one that we will be using. Yes, that's correct. Yep, cool. yeah, why not? Excellent. Why not? So we're going to select this one and just click OK. And just to confirm, if we look at config, we can see that we've got the basic data here. And this is why uh, naming conventions are important. Exactly. It's fantastic. Uh, but you all right, notice so that there's no underscores there. There are no underscores. This was this was before we had standards. Good. This, was, good. this was the early days. Early days, Steve. Exactly. Um, now I can never. I can <laughs> Um, I can never remember the name of the command that we need, um, but if we just type in get command module windows autopilot intune, it brings back all the ones that are available. Uh, and we need convert to autopilot config JSON, which is a lovely uh, commandlet name that just rolls off the tongue. And it totally meets the um, alias, uh, the, the command line uh, recommendations. Oh yeah, no, exactly. Um, and well, then I just output sorry. it, right? Um, it's yeah. out file, C drive bin. And you have uh, to make sure it's saved as ASCII. Encoding ASCII, that's right. Autopilot. Uh, I will also, Ben, I've linked in the chat um, If you, when you get to the point. Um, there is a blog post on uh, Sysman Squad by uh, Jake Shackelford that is a, um, it's our, it's actually an autopilot um, companion guide that he wrote based on our uh, video no, episode number two in mm -hmm. our series um, that covers how to set up autopilot, all those things. But lower down in there, it's actually got the command lines for uh, that you've just gone through to create that JSON file and all that sort of oh, stuff. Oh, great. So, okay. Um, yeah. So we'll link that down in the, in the description below as well. But um, he's got the code in um, in the bottom of that um, Excellent. blog post for you. So cool. Um, all right. Let's uh, minimize this somehow. I don't know how Top to do that. Corner. Top corner. Keep going up. Keep going up. I got it. Up. Yay. Excellent. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> How many years have you been using computers for? Lots of computer. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's just pop out of PowerShell for a hot second. Uh, so we can see here that we have a file now, autopilot config uh, dot JSON, which is the uh, which has all the media that we need uh, to, to sort of auto config without having to enroll the device. Because obviously at this point, we don't know what the device is. Um, and the, the idea is that we... Uh, that we've never enrolled it before. Um, so now the next part uh, that we need to do, uh, and at the moment we need to do this manually, uh, but I will have commandlets available in the module to do this, um, is we need to pull down a copy of WinPE, uh, and then we need to uh, grab a copy of the latest version of Windows 10 um, as an ISO from the uh, from the Microsoft. What is it uh, the download store, the my.visualstudio? I can from never wherever remember you have access to download from where, the okay, latest. From wherever version. you have access to download the latest version of Windows 10, that is where you'll go. Um, so we'll just step through sort of what we see here. Um, so we go into this uh, existing folder, one I prepared earlier. Uh, we have two files or two folders here. One is called images, um, which has just got some WinPE fanciness. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter what's in here, um, but this folder here, images, this is empty. This is something that we need to remember. 
We also have WinPE, which has got everything to do with WinPE and how to boot a device into WinPE. Um, and then a very important folder in here called scripts um, that has, um, we'll have to get rid of that one as well, but that's fine. Make sure you copy the file name correctly. Yes, very important, but the so, code the code handles that, so it's fine. Yep. Um, but the, the, key, the key script here, or the key thing to see here is uh, invoke provision.ps1. So this is the actual script that will uh, do all of the work once we've created the USB. Um, and that is basically just going, we're going to format the disk of the device and we're going to install uh, Windows 10 onto it. Um, so this is this is sort of the meat of the solution. Um, everything else we're doing is just how to provision the USB. So we need to, uh, as I said, uh, this images folder uh, is empty. We need to grab the, uh, the media to put in here. And we do that by going to our... Uh, ISO that we've downloaded from wherever we get our Windows 10 uh, images, um, extracting the ISO into a folder and going into uh, sources and install.wim. So the install.wim uh, is where uh, the, the installation media exists for what we need. Um, so we're just going to copy that and we're going to chuck it in here. And we're going to paste it. Okay, so once we've got the uh, the installation media, now it, it, it's worth saying here that um, we're we're using just a bare bones version of Windows 10. But if you were to, as as uh, Adam was suggesting, um, if you were to mod if you wanted to modify that whim uh, to add things to it, to add drivers, to you know add software or whatever. Um, you would do that to the WIM file before you put it into this folder. Um, that way you could have a customized version of Windows 10 um, uh, to sort of utilize with this solution as well. So once you've created that, uh, you just need to zip it up, um, which is one I've got here. Um, and that's it. That's as, as far as sort of preparation. That's that's all the work that we need to do. Um, what I would recommend doing um, is if you were going to use this in a production environment, I would put this up in a Azure storage account um, and just grab the URL and use that uh, for the command that we're about to run. Um, but for now, uh, using it from a machine uh, does the same thing. Um, so we're just going to pop back into PowerShell, clear the screen so we don't need to see any of that. And we're going to import the module because I haven't got it published yet. And then we are going to go get command intune.usb.creator. Cool, this is interesting. It actually shows all the private uh, function names. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing I need to do uh, just for this scenario is I need to uh, create my USB, uh, which I'm just creating a VHDX because uh, I don't have a USB handy. Um, and we're just going to create a 20 gig uh, file. Shouldn't take too long. Just enjoy the dead air for a hot second. Oh, yeah. That's what we're supposed to do. Exactly. Um, cool. We've got that created. Um, we can see it here on uh, in my Explorer, local disk D. It's 19 gig. It's healthy. Awesome. Um, so now we're going to publish. Uh, so we're going to run this command, publish image to USB. So if we go publish image to USB, I've actually got all of this uh, already auto-completed for me, um, which is a really cool uh, part of the new uh, module that I've just completely drawn a blank. Um, PS uh, read line. If you yes. get the latest version, you've got uh, autocomplete for your commands, which is great. Um, so all we're doing is uh, doing publish image to USB. The image path is that zip file that we've created. So again, if you had this in a storage account, you just put the HTTP path. Um, we're using bits to download it, so it doesn't matter whether it's local or remote. Um, we're just giving it a name. Um, this uh, doesn't need to be in the production solution, but I will fix that later. Um, and then we have the path to our autopilot JSON file, um, which I'll just actually make sure that that is uh, correct because we have created a new one, autopilot config. Awesome. All right, so what we do is we just hit enter and it's going to fail miserably. Because you're looking at some sort of XML. Mm. No, you're no. splitting a path. I'm using leaf base, which needs to be done in PowerShell 7, okay. not 5. Here we go. Always, always 
always test your stuff. Yes. Uh, so I test but it stuff. as we're recording because that's that's the way. Exactly. Finally, um, one of Ben's demo has, demos has failed. Yeah, We've it's done it's it. Very... We have done it, Steve. Yeah, man. I'm he's pretty one excited. of us. He's got a beard almost, and he's got <laughs> failed demos live. This yeah, is good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, let's let's give this another go from PowerShell Seven. Uh, I should have I should have uh, I should have started here to begin with. Awesome. So there's a requirement to have what minimum PowerShell Seven or PowerShell Six at the moment. Uh, yes, you can do it in six, but if you're if you're using six and haven't upgraded, um, the upgrade path from six is immediately to seven. So the latest version of Core is PowerShell seven. So okay. if you're maintaining Core, you have PowerShell seven, um, and there is no reason to not install PowerShell seven on any of your environments. Uh, it installs as a uh, con like basically a containerized version. Um, and it it sort of has all of the required libraries, so you know you can install this on uh, like a Windows 8 machine, or even a Windows 7 machine, or a Linux machine, or a Mac, uh -huh. Mac machine. So that's sort of why I've, I've developed in Seven because it's uh, the most cross-platform solution. Okay. Cool. Um, so it's obviously just gone through and it's just made sure that the media is where it needs to be. Um, we can see that it's already extracted the stuff. If it hasn't, it's going to download that. Um, it, again, it uses bits to download that. So depending on your internet connection, it could take a little while. Um, we can see the the file here is 4.5 gig. So um, there has been examples where I've downloaded it on a very slow internet connection and it's taken quite a while. Yes. Um, but it, it tells you what it's doing all the way through. Yeah. Um, once it's provisioned and got everything ready on your local machine, it then just asks you uh, which disk you want to provision. In this case, it's only shown us um, the the virtual disk or the USB that we're using. It will not show you your C drive. You cannot kill your computer using this. That is the very important thing. Um, the code that we sort of initially built this on um, didn't have that. Um, so it was kind of like a grenade. It was very, very risky to use. Yep. Um, so we're just going to select that disk by selecting one. And we're just going to go through that process. So we're setting up the disk, um, setting up a couple of partitions. So we've got WinPE and that images uh, partition as well. Um, and again, it tells you everything that's happening on the screen, which is great. And writing media, I like this one. Steve might as well. Yeah, now I have a proper file copy. I have now got pro proper file copies so that, uh, that was, this was actually a, a requirement from uh, a client that I built this for um, that they needed to see the, uh, they needed to know every single step because, you know, if you're copying that, uh, that, that ISO file or that WIM file to a USB, it can actually take quite a long time. Um, yep. And if we didn't have any way of uh, sort of doing a write progress, um, they thought it was broken. So, you know, just being able to utilize the native uh, copy libraries helped yep. that greatly um, makes sense the final yeah so the final thing we're doing is we're grabbing um the latest daily version of powershell 7. um we're doing this so that we can bootstrap from WinPE into powershell to do the work that we need to do on the uh, on the new machine so WinPE doesn't actually have a lot of the functionality that we wanted to do uh, the core thing being that we wanted to write the solution in powershell um so just being able to sort of bootstrap into into PowerShell from WinPE was fantastic, and it just makes this whole solution a lot more modern. Yep. Uh, so I'll just give this a. And, and I just want to know, did it take you longer to make the Image Builder logo than it did to write the code? Yes. Uh, no comment. Um, this error is nothing. It's uh, I, I have to fix this again. This is all very uh, pre-production. Um, it took me uh, it took me longer to find a website that does the ASCII generation uh, and then uh, figuring out how I can encode it to base64 so that it didn't uh, look messy in my code. Uh, nice. Yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right. So uh, we've now got our USB built. If we go in, uh, we can see our disk is now split into two partitions, D and E. Um, if we look in here, this should all look very familiar to the to the folder that I was showing you before. Um, we go into the scripts, and we can see autopilot config. It's actually got two because I didn't delete that file before. Uh, so let's just let's just get rid of this one. Ooh, uh, it's worth noting that I believe the name is going to matter when you it go does. to this thing. And that's why, that is why I am making sure that it is exactly correct. Um, the provisioning script itself actually, regardless of what this is called, will uh, will name it correctly Excellent. as well. 
Um, okay. So it's just it's you know it's just giving us um, multiple levels of making sure that we don't uh, sort of stuff ourselves up. Yes. Um, so the other, the only other addition to this uh, folder, as you can see here, is this uh, PWSH folder, which is the PowerShell 7 um, media. Um, so this is just sort of what we're using to bootstrap. So we're actually using a command, uh, so a, a bash command um, to launch this, uh, which is which is pretty crazy. Um, all right, so we've created our media. We can confirm in here we've got images install.wim, which is awesome. Um, so now we just need to build a machine and, and sort of plug this device in and just sort of see what happens. So for this scenario, we're going to build a, uh, a virtual machine. I'm just going to close all this down because I've had some issues with the demo before. Uh, right. And Steve might need to help me with this because it's been a while since I've done this manually. So I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Yep. Uh, you haven't dismounted the VHDX. Uh, unmounted, yes. Correct. Let's do that here. Give it a second. And hopefully it doesn't fail again. Mm. But if this was on a USB, you would just, or you wouldn't need to do this piece, right? No, you wouldn't. No, it, that's you just you'd simply at this stage, this would be take the USB out of the machine you built it in and plug it into the machine you're building. That's yep. correct. Oh, love this. Yep, that's awesome. Let's just uh, let's just build the virtual machine and we'll get back to that. All right. So we'll just call this intune.training. Close enough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough is good enough. I'll give it a Gen 2. I'll give it uh, 2 gig of RAM. Um, so why would we go Gen 1 over Gen 2 or Gen 2 over Gen 1? Um, so it gives us newer virtualization features. Uh, we can do uh, UFI-based firmware. Um, we can also, I believe, uh, is Gen 2 the only thing that we can uh, encrypt disks? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I've got another solution um, that is not what we're talking about right now um, that will uh, build me virtual machines on the fly for clients that also allows me to do, immediately do TPM-based encryption. So um, that's, why, that's why we use Gen 2. Yep. Um, all right, that's all good. Connected, we'll just default switch. And we just got to wait for this, which has decided to fall so out. You can finish building your machine and say attach disk later. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you um, can actually point it there because when you finish, uh, it does an auto start. Oh, great. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's see, drive bin uh, VHDX. Cool, finish. All right, so let's just try and figure out what's so going on with this. So just go and start um, Disk Manager again, because sometimes it'll just happen oh, like that. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. And readable. Lovely. Why is this giving me so um, much pain? Go up to Actions up the top. Uh, oh, and just hit Rescan. Yeah, let's see. Rescan. So what should happen? Um, how about we just go through what should happen here, Ben, because I don't think we're going to be successful. Yeah, that's okay. So, all right, basically what's going to happen at this point is that once you've generated the uh, you've generated the USB, you've plugged it into your device and you've booted into the USB, um, whether, you know, that depends on whatever hardware you've got. In my case, it'd be F12 to get into the boot menu. You select the USB. Um, it's going to immediately launch with the... Um, oh, maybe it's going to come up now. Yes, it's gone. Okay, let's let's give this a sec. Let's give this a go. Um, um, so, Ben, what you need to do, sorry, before we do that, is yeah. you actually, if you want to go to file settings of the VM. Yes. Um, so right now you've got your... Um, bootable VHDX there. You need to actually have a... Um, oh, I do too, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, cool. So you go to SCSI controller. SCSI controller, yep. Uh, chain, go to hard disk that's already there mm -hmm. and change it to one, location one. Hit apply and then add a second one on the right-hand side. Yep, SCSI and hard drive. 
and hit new. And it'll go through the UI, yep. dynamic expanding. Yep, and just leave it defaults. Cool. So, yeah, what we're doing here is we're creating. Um, and while we're in here, Ben, if you want to go to security, sorry. To oh, yeah, and we'll do all this sort of stuff. And we'll so, turn on the TPM. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is under checkpoints. For those people who don't like checkpoints, you go mm -hmm. in here and you can disable that. Yeah. And so this is, all of this is because we're in Hyper-V and we don't have a physical box, we're having to exactly. do these steps. This has, nothing to, this has nothing to do with the actual, yeah, this has nothing to do with the actual solution. This is just showing uh, everyone the best practice for, yep. for you know, sort of testing uh, in Hyper-V. And the yep. key thing with the security stuff is that enabling TPM means that when we uh, enroll our device, it's going to immediately encrypt based on our BitLocker policies if we have those BitLocker policies set up. Otherwise, exactly. it's going to fail and we're going to get compliance issues. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the whole hard disk situation here is you're creating a new blank hard disk, which is the new destination, which would have been the same as your physical hard drive in your new laptop that you're trying to provision. And then the right. other hard disk is your USB drive that yep. you've got and, so you can plug in. Yep, and just right. move the, that one to the top and we're all yep. happy to Because cool. what will happen okay. is once the whole OS build goes through, um, it's going to then convert the boot partition to use the new disk instead of the um, old disk yep. or the, the secondary disk. That's right. Um, and one sort of one question that I've had around this already is, so we're basically creating quite a quite a dangerous uh, device here because sort of no matter what it plugs into, we can see here um, it's going to go through and <laughs> we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to uh, blur that one out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, once it goes through uh, and, and uh, uh, builds, if you plug this into any device, it's going to immediately wipe it and re-image it. Um, That's completed. That uh, yeah, error has it. Uh, Dism failed. Um, this is this is yeah. great. I'm definitely definitely stoked about this. Um, it's, it's probably it's because we haven't prepared the disk properly. Potentially. Um, yeah, I've a hundred percent tested this a million times uh, over the last couple of days, but not in a virtual machine. So, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll just hopefully it goes through this time, and if it doesn't, we'll just call it and then go from there. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, that looks like it's sorting out the partition yeah. table a little bit differently this time. Yeah. Um, so one of the things you'll note, the first thing that we're doing there is setting the power policy um, to make sure that you've got all the power of the device to build it rather than um, having it go into um, balanced, which is the yep. default for uh, WinRM. Correct. So this shouldn't take too long, um, but I suppose it is like a 127 gig disk that it's trying to partition. Yeah, but oh, it, should be, yeah. it should be on fast, but... Um, yeah. yeah, and it's been a very long time since I've actually tested this on a virtual machine, so who yeah. knows? But so the expectation here is that right now you there are you format and partition the drive, you're copying the, you're expanding the WIM, you're yep. basically putting the OS on the machine in a bootable state. You're installing the OS onto the box, That's and then you're copying down the autopilot JSON file, which is the key to all of this, yep. having that file in place, which prevents you from having to upload your hardware hash, hardware hash to yep. your Intune tenant, which That's then correct. lets you let you autopilot any machine that that JSON file ends up on, which is the point that you were making, which is having a kill bit in this USB stick so it can only be run once. Is that what you were saying? That, yeah, so the, and the, um, the, the sort of the request was, um, is there a way that we can get the end user to, uh, to provision a device for themselves, um, but have it only work once? Um, because as, as I said, you know, this is quite a, quite a powerful solution, um, but if someone were to accidentally plug this device into their computer and turn the computer on, um, it could it could be a headache. So um, the the solution will uh, will contain a solution where you can uh, sort of set a kill switch on this so that uh, as soon as it's provisioned itself, it will format the USB as well, um, which is which is kind of cool. And I, I definitely understand the necessity of it as well. 
Um, and there'll also be a, um, a, qu a question before it starts formatting going, you're about to format your hard drive. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, that's um, right. And I can I even can... see it being something as simple as um, at least like as soon as the autopilot JSON file gets copied to the machine, you delete that file because that's a key, you know, that that lets you provision, yeah. you know, device in so, and that kind of thing. But what, then what? even more so formatting the USB would, you know, that really kills it off. Yeah. So, so one of the good things is, yeah, you can format the disk while it's still in Win. RM because it's loaded into memory. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. pretty awesome. It certainly is. Um, so this uh, normally takes a few minutes to go through. Because this uh, is, yeah, I mean, this is grabbing everything in that WIM file and just moving it into the disk. So, you know, no matter how you do it, there's a lot of, there's, you know, 4.5 gig of data there. So it's it, it does take a while. Compressed um, 4.5. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Seven or eight. Yeah. Um, so the one thing I was going to say around the sort of the kill switch stuff is I want to make sure that it is a switch specifically because I do see a scenario where, um, you know, IT support staff might want to have the ability to have an, an always available device that they can use to re-image machines um, that yep. doesn't kill itself after every build. Um, so, the, you know, the idea here is that it's a powerful tool, but if it's being used by people that know what it is, it, it you know, it's fine. They can keep it. Um, but if we're giving it to end end users that don't, we want to make it so that it, it blows itself up at the end. Yep. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's done. So we can see in total, like it's it's only taken three minutes to complete. Obviously, there was a, a weird glitch there with the um, virtual machine. But this, you know, we've gone from not having a machine uh, ready to having it ready in in just under five minutes, which is pretty sweet. So now, if we hit exit on that, Ben, what's going to happen? It should. Reimage. Um, I might need to disconnect. I'm just going to go in and change the settings here, and just get Maybe, rid of. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just yeah. I'm just going to get rid of this one. So this is kind of like unplugging the USB. Um, just apply that, and we'll just make sure that this is the primary one, and we'll just start it back up. Wait for it to load. Um, so we were first... talking the other day um, on Discord with some folks about the um, – there was a feature announced sometime last year was the cloud reset, cloud reimage. Yep. Yeah. I, don't remember what the, I can't remember what the feature name was, but it was essentially, you know, right now you can go in your machine, you go to settings, and you can click reset. Yep. Or from Intune, you can reset that device. And so it – wipes it back to whatever the OS is that's on the machine at that that's point. Um, and so the cloud reset would even allow you to be able to, to pull all of your stuff down, a new image, re-image. Re it's like cloud re-image or something. So you're, you're actually yeah. re-imaging the device from the cloud, yep. not just resetting with what's local. So um, from what I've seen in the insiders, I don't know if this is where you're going with this, Adam, but from what I've seen in the insiders um, previews that have this on there, because it's coming out with the 2004 um, image, um, you need to have the OS running. And when you do um, settings reset, you have the ability to go and download the latest version. Okay, yeah, that's um, cool. So, so, yeah, so I mean, the point, I, yeah, so part of the point here was so, I mean, this is a great solution if you've got a machine that's at the wrong OS altogether or you just need to do it quickly or you, you've swapped out hard drives, you have no media, you know, those sorts of scenarios. But the, it's not to say that an end user who's got a bricked machine, some, you know, some issue needs a re-image, they have other options as well available to them. And it sounds like even with 2004 for Windows, it sounds like there's even a better op or a, a, an enhanced option of being able to get the latest OS version to be able to do a reset to a re-image to um as you do that reset for the client it takes longer but yeah um, but it it still does the same work. i think like so in my mind i'm trying to reconcile all the options that are available for this type of scenario where you don't have any on-premises infrastructure how do you do this 
And I think that's one of that has been one of the continual questions that has come up on transitioning. How do we, if a hard drive dies, how do we put the OS back on that box? Yeah. How do we do that? Sure Efficiently at, at enterprise scale, how do we how do we handle this? Yeah. And I think this is a really slick way to do that. I, I like the idea here. This Definitely. is really cool. Yeah, I like it as well. Um, like I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if we, if we've got the ability to do cloud deploy of an operating system from like bare metal, that's going to be incredible. That yes. that's going to solve that's going to solve a lot of problems that I don't even think people have really had issues with. It's, or realize it's gonna, that's an issue. Or realize that there's issues. Yeah, like I mean, bare metal cloud deploy is going to be a thing that is, is to to use a terrible term is going to change the game. Um, and I'm hoping that we get access to that soon. I don't know. Like I know that there's like cloud restore and like cloud reimage, but like bare metal cloud deploy. That that's what I want. I want yeah. the ability to be like, I've in you know I've got my serial number. I've got my hash from my hardware vendor. Um, you know, we've told the hardware vendor that we don't want an operating system installed on it. They send it to us. We turn it on. It boots to BIOS. We plug in, you know, network or internet connectivity and it immediately pulls down a, an image. It's, you know, it's like the next version of Pixie Boot, basically. Yep. Yeah. So, Ben, I, th I mean, it, okay, so, I mean, you've got me thinking here on, I mean, it's this isn't, this isn't quite there, but essentially what you've built, you could put in a component that, I mean, you could essentially not put the OS, not put the nope. WIM file on the USB, and you could pull it down from cloud storage. And so that's, I mean, that's a step cl closer. So if you were managing this centrally, instead of shipping out a USB stick that may or may not get used, and now we've got a new version of the OS, or we've changed yep. out our custom image, you could host an image in the cloud and the user could could boot in and download the the um, stuff from the cloud. Now, so you'd hold have up. to have so, a wire plugged in, or you'd have to have a wireless wireless drivers in in WinPE. I mean, it gets complicated real fast. But yeah, I mean, I'm thinking along those lines. I mean, it's it definitely seems you know like that's a that's a it's a viable yeah it's a to, it's a yeah. viable step so forgive me like correct me if i'm wrong but i don't believe WinP has got network connectivity uh it does it has so, wired and um yeah, i want to say has, dave segura has has a solution on uh, they wrote some at some point to uh well he uses winre i think well i don't know I know I've seen a version of using WinRE instead of WinPE, where you because you, to get Wi-Fi drivers into WinPE, yep. something so along those lines. You can load network drivers into WinPE because that's what we do with Config Manager. Right. Um, okay. So there is a way to do it. Um, there is so a then, way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, a hundred percent. There would be a way that you could just go. We don't need to create this. Uh, we don't need to create the the image or the USB with you know that five gig uh, media um, we can just we can just you know have some kind of bootstrap thing that pulls the content down but then the question uh, needs to be asked is there benefit in making every single device take let's say 15 minutes to pull down the media and install or is there a benefit in taking 15 minutes to pull it down on the usb and then pushing it out to all these machines yeah um it, that it comes down to how you need to handle it in a corporate network. Because yeah, if yeah, you exactly. got rid of a Pixie server, for example, um, you could then turn around and have a USB key that's going off and downloading from a central um, DFS share. Yeah, completely. Um, so, and if you've I mean, got a fast it's a network question of, do, do you have big enough USBs to handle it? Do you have, yep. if you're in a room that has, if you have Pixie and you have, a, you know, a bunch of old machines or a bunch of machines plugged in in a, in a room, in a build lab. I mean, yeah. So e there are options there. You could, different ways yep. you could do it. It's that's the reason why all these different build options have always existed. Is sometimes yeah. you need off media. Yep. Sometimes you need bootables. I mean, yeah. Yeah, completely. And it, yeah, at the end of the day, this is this is creating a, a you know 100% offline media solution. Um, if we wanted to do an online one, it it actually wouldn't be that hard. Um, we, it, the complexity would go down to that. Okay, now we need to now we need to handle drivers for for network connectivity. 
um, and then we need to understand the client's hardware environment. Um, you know, yep. do they just have one type of machine? Probably not. So then we need to, you know, then we need to look after hardware and all that sort of stuff. And then, um, welcome, to hey, we are. Training. welcome to Intune nice. Training, the place to learn about Intune with Adam and Steve. Um, and uh, Ben. And Ben, yeah, exactly. So look, we obviously, we stumble a little bit. Uh, as I said, this solution isn't available in the gallery as we talk about it, but hopefully by the time this airs, it will. Um, Primarily at the moment, it's using PowerShell 7. Um, I will endeavor to get it to PowerShell 5. But at this point in the game, if you guys don't have PowerShell 7 installed on your machine, you need to be asking yourselves why not. Um, I've seen very little reason to not use it as my primary uh, daily console or terminal. Um, but yeah, so we've gone, uh, we've got a machine. It's immediately at the at the um, autopilot out of box experience. We put our credentials in, and then we've got a machine built. Um, so the scalability of this is huge. You build as many USBs as you want, give them out to people and just go, you know, go forth and, and re-image your environment. And that's your deployment solution for, you know, for a full scale uh, re-image or redeployment. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's very slick, Ben. Uh, I mean, I think we're going to look forward to uh, poking at this and hopefully we see more improvements and enhancements on the, on this front. I mean, I think this, this is a, I've not seen or heard of a, you know, fully, you know, uh, a way to do this in an environment that's fully Azure AD join. Um, yeah. And, I mean, this is this is nice. I think this fits a need for sure. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, look, at the moment, the code is available uh, on my GitHub, which is uh, tabs, not spaces. Um, and obviously, anyone is free to to fork it and and contribute in any way shape or form this is 100 percent open source um and as i said it will be up in the gallery by the time this is published hopefully i will actually do it after we finish talking awesome cool very nice well thanks for joining us again ben i mean uh, we keep treating you like a guest but uh, you know you're you're on the team so we're going to stop saying nice things to you and we're just going <laughs> to say hey thanks for, thanks for being here ben well, um, now, now that you've earned your stripes with uh failing demos yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I've got yeah. my stress of failing demos. Mostly yeah. Beer, um, yeah, you're you're in. So that's it. You're no longer a guest. This is the Stephen Adam and Ben show now. Excellent. Perfect. Uh, so hey, we're not gonna we you can find all of our info. We've got we've got um, all of our bios with all of our relevant links in the box below. Um, smash that bell and do all the silliness you do on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know, subscribe and um <clears throat> hey and hey, we appreciate your comments. Yeah. You guys have, um, we keep getting wonderful comments. We're um, trying to keep up with them and answer them. And thanks for your support. And by Thank the you. way, if you made it this far, we crossed the 7,000 subscriber mark this last week. So, yep. wow. Thank you so much for yes, the support. We really appreciate it. We so. really do. Well, that's it, boys. Awesome. See you next thanks, time. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, See Ben. You later. Bye. Thanks. Bye.